Hi there, I'm Lindsay Sparks, author of fantasy and sci-fi romance books that almost always include mythology with my own special twist. Welcome to my weekly Author's Notes podcast. Today is Sunday, March 19th. I didn't update the date in my notes, and I would love to share some of my reflections from this past week with you. So first of all, uh, normal deals and steals, um, freebies, for my newsletter subscribers, um, you can get a bunch of ebooks and audiobooks if you subscribe to my newsletter. Um, and the link for that is in the show notes. Uh, or you can also subscribe by just going to my website, which is authorlindsaysparks.com. That's it. There's a little newsletter sign up thing on that homepage. Um, okay, so what am I working on right now? <laughs> tell you what I'm not working on. (laughs) I am not recording dissonance like I'm supposed to be doing tonight because I got distracted. (laughs) So I have not started dissonance for um, read by the author. Um, And it's actually probably a good thing. I was going back and forth between doing it or not. I have been really um, like allergy congested, which is funny because I haven't had allergies like, um, you know, stuffy nose, itchy eyes, that kind of thing, sneezing, um, since before my first child, before my first child was born. So it was like the beginning of my pregnancy, my first pregnancy. I like, it's like the pregnancy like cured my allergies. (laughs) I haven't had any problems since. So for like five years, basically, um, (laughs) And all of a sudden, the past few weeks, I am just like a ball of sneezes and my eyes are so itchy and gross and I just feel like I have to blow my nose like every five minutes. It's super annoying. Um, And it's like not productive. Not like when you have a cold and you can like kind of clear out for a little bit. Sorry, this is like TMI, but oh my gosh, (laughs) This, um, this is a really fun, uh, pregnancy symptom that I haven't experienced before. (laughs) So I'm hoping my, um, I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow and I'm going to like beg them to tell me what I can take to like some sort of nose spray or eye drops or something (laughs) to help with this. Um, because I, I just feel like nasally and gross. And I don't want to, I don't want to record me reading a book like this. So I am not doing that today. Hopefully I will be feeling less nasally and gross next week. So then I will be able to start dissonance. Um, fingers crossed. I'm hopeful as always. Um, unless it has to do with Facebook, <laughs> then there's abandon all hope. Um, okay. So, uh, what am I working on to move into the positive? Um, I have not started it yet. The outline is good to go. Mostly I need to like work on the first few scenes a little bit in the outline. Um, I'm going to need like a nice long brainstorm shower for that. Uh, or actually this could work out really well to my advantage because I have a long drive to the doctors tomorrow and I will be by myself without any children. Um, so Driving is another really good brainstorming time for me. Sometimes it's better even than the shower, which is amazing. The shower is like where the miracles happen in my brain, apparently. (laughs) My muse is like, yes, all the ideas while you're wet and can't write anything down. But I do need to get one of those waterproof notepads. Um, But driving is another one. Again, can't really write it down because I'm driving. (laughs) But I could always bring my voice recorder if I was really feeling like the inspiration might strike. But anyway, I do need to figure out like what I I don't have in mind what the actual opening scene is for this final book. It's kind of a big deal. But um, now that I've finished All World Online, the latest episode of All World Online, which is where these two stories intersect. Um, I am feeling more, sorry, I'm just like scratching my head. I'm just like itchy from this whole allergy flare up thing. Um, I'll try to stop. I'll I'll try to restrain myself until I'm done. Uh, but now that the two stories from All World Online, Looking Glass and Where Rise of the Revenants will be going, 
have it intersected in looking glass. Um, I feel more comfortable with moving forward with Rise of the Revenants. So I just need to get that opening scene down and then I feel like I will be up off to the races, knock on wood, like hopefully. Um, for some reason, this one's been really difficult for me to start, but I, <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> um, my brain is just not working properly. The focus is not there. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, when I get to my low, <laughs> uh, I uh, did write, um, lots of stuff last week. Um, none of them were Rise of the Revenants. Uh, but I am currently in the middle of writing episode 12 of The Last Vampire Queen. My thought here was to be smart and give myself, like, the best start possible when I get into Rise of the Revenants. Revenants, meaning I won't have to, like, stop after a week to write The Last Vampire Queen. So I just want to get the episode of The Last Vampire Queen that's going to come out on the first done. And then the only thing I have to stop to write is the patron's choice story. But that's always fun and easy for me to get into that headspace. So, um, yeah, so hopefully I'll finish this um, episode of The Last Vampire Queen tomorrow. And then on Tuesday, I'll be diving into Rise of the Revenants, hopefully with an actual idea of what the opening scene is. (laughs) So otherwise, I might be starting off with a shower at 6 a.m., uh, just to brainstorm a little bit and see if my muse won't like inspire me. <laughs> um, and then I am, like I said, taking a break between uh, recording things for read by the author. So hopefully next week I will be less sneezy and itchy and congested and feel comfortable recording myself reading again. And then I can start dissonance. Um, okay, what am I reading right now? I am reading um, Rejection, which is the second book in the, I want to say the Mate Games is the series, um, but it's like the Mate Games colon war uh, by Kay Lorraine and Meg Allen. It is a paranormal reverse harem. Uh, LP and I read the first book, Obsession, for No Shelf Control. <laughs> And when we recorded No Shelf Control, we she had just finished book two. This never happens. She had just finished book two. We were only reading book one for the podcast. And I w- had just started book two. So we both really enjoyed book one and jumped, dove headfirst into book two. So I'm re- um, in the middle of book two now, which is rejection. And then I also started, um, excuse me, hiccup. Uh, I also started... Uh, a hardcover book uh, because I have fallen into a terrible habit of just scrolling on my phone when I get into bed and so I'm trying to just make it so that when I lay down I plug in my phone before I get into bed and then I don't pick it up again until I get out of bed in the morning so then the next habit (laughs) that I'm going to have to break is picking up my phone as soon as I wake up and looking at it So I just need to like not do that. Um, Just get out of bed, put on my slippers and like shuffle downstairs um, while I'm still half asleep and not look at my phone and not look at my phone until I'm done writing for the morning because that is where I keep getting, I think like veer, veering off course. So my goals, these are not my big goals, my little goals that I'm trying to like fix trying to rewire my brain for, for a minute here is set some good habits. Um, at night I'm going to plug in my phone and I'm not going to look at it. So I get into my bedroom, plug in my phone, don't pick it up again. And then I'll read my book spells for forgetting or whatever other book I want to read after that. And in the morning, instead of seeing what emails I have or how book sales are doing, I will just get up and put my feet into my slippers and grab the baby monitor and my water and my phone and go downstairs and get on my computer. So that's what I, that's my plan. That's my hopeful, optimistic plan. (laughs) Um, But I, so all that being said, I'm two chapters into Spells for Forgetting and I am enjoying it. It is, takes place in my beloved Puget Sound, which I didn't even know when I picked it out from my enormous TBR shelf shelves. Uh, and okay. What am I watching? I still need to watch the finale of the last of us. So I'm avoiding all mentions of that on the internet. Like it is the plague 
but not a fungal one. Uh, and then we are on season four, I think, of Bosch, and I believe there are seven seasons. So I am, we're like, almost halfway through. I'm... My husband mentioned something that he was like, if this continues on, I don't think I can continue it. And I was like, a part of me is like, I hope it continues on so that he doesn't want to continue it. <laughs> because it's just so much like police procedural stuff. And then like, that's cool if that's your thing. Uh, it's not my thing. Uh, it's less like mystery, less like, I don't know. There's a lot of like interpersonal drama, some drama that's unnecessary. I, I don't know. Um, it's not my favorite of our shows, but I'll keep watching it if my husband wants to. Um, but I did just see that Yellow Jackets season two premiered. Um, I want to say today, maybe. And I'm so excited. <laughs> that's what I want to be watching. So. Uh, eventually we'll get to that. At least by the time we finish Bosch, Yellow Jacket season two should be completely out. Assuming it's not all out already. I don't think it is. I think they're not doing, I think they're doing like an episode a week. Um, so yeah, looking at the bright side, (laughs) uh, my highs this week, I have a couple. Um, I, my editor got Darkness Between the Stars back early, which is always a nice sign, Um, she said it was a super clean manuscript, which felt really good to hear. And she had nothing but good things to say about it. So, I mean, other than like the revision changes that she, the notes that she made, like within the manuscript of like grammar stuff, um, and consistency stuff, but there really wasn't very much. So this, um, that felt really good. Like I've said before, for whatever reason, I'm nervous about this book. I think because it's so racy, um, definitely, and she commented on this, it's my steamiest book that she's edited. It's my steamiest book that I have published or will be published, will be published on retailers. So, but it's all just getting me worked out, worked, getting me warmed up for putting out The Last Vampire Queen to like the grand, greater public beyond just my patrons. So, <laughs> cause that's like so much steamier. So um, yeah. Anyway, so I got that sent off to my proofreader, which felt really good. Uh, and I don't, that, when she's done with that, then I get it back and I do the formatting. Uh, but the formatting is simple, not simple. It's not simple. Um, but it is nice and easier than book one because we already have the uh, design elements from book one that we can just adapt for book two. So that's nice. We don't need to start from scratch again. Um, The other high this week was designing. I I have had an idea of what I want to do for the the interior design elements for the Echo Trilogy Special Editions. I've had this idea in my head, and it was just a matter of figuring out how to do it. Um, I attempted to get mid-journey uh, to create something that would work and mid journey could not create something that worked. At least I couldn't get it to create something that would work for this. And that's fine. It it was actually more fun to make it myself. So I had this idea to do like, um, cascading hieroglyphs coming down. I'm talking about the chapter decorative chapter headings right now. So I wanted to do cascading hieroglyphs coming down the top part of the page, like on chapter one. Um, and where it says like chapter one, real and unreal or unreal and real, I think is the, um, subtitle for that chapter. Uh, but yeah, so I wanted to have cascading hieroglyphs, but I wanted to have them distorted by like what looks like, uh, like water ripples. Like when you throw a rock into water and there's like a ring of water ripples to be like the distortion in time that is happening, um, kind of around Lex because she's a, she's kind of anomalous, um, in the echoes and the aughts and the timeline and everything. Um, and so I could picture what I wanted to do. I didn't know how to do it. Um, so I turned to good old Google and I found some instructions on how to do it in Photoshop. And, uh, it took some experimenting, uh, figuring out how to 
get it quite right, but I did, and I love it, and it looks really, really great. I added some other fun little decorative elements, and I think we have it. I showed it to my assistant. Mandy said it looked, she said she really, really loves it, um, and she is not one to hold back if she doesn't love it, <laughs> even though it's me. <laughs> like, she's not afraid to hurt my feelings. So that's great, and I'm really excited uh, with how it's looking, and it, it's a great um, launch launch pad or starting off point for the other design elements um, in the interior of the book. So I now have an idea of exactly what I want to do for like the little decorative um, breaks between scenes within chapters. Um, and then uh, I don't have as firm of an idea of what I want to do for the parts breaks, like the part one he um, header page part two, that kind of thing. Um, I have an idea that I want to do like the location because each one says the location. So it'll be like part one, University of Washington, part two, Bainbridge Island, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, and then there's like a DRL Bari, totally butchering that every time I say it, part, I think. And then there's like a Florence, Italy part, I want to say. Um, I would have to actually look at the book to see. Um, and then obviously later on the parts get, um, different in later books. Uh, so I wanted to do something like setting based for each part. So like for the university of Washington, I wanted to do like us and have them all look the same style, like sketches. But for this, I think I actually would need to use Mid Journey um, to create it because that's the only way that I would be able to get it done in time and have it look really, really good. Um, so my thought was, at least for the University of Washington one, well, I'm not sure, but I would need to start with a photo and then have Mid Journey make it look like a pencil sketch or an ink sketch. Um, so we'll see how that works out if I can do that. Um, I, I think it could be really cool. We'll see. Um, and then have those, my, my idea is to have those sketched settings be on like the bottom of the page and then have the actual top of the page be more blank than the chapter, like kind of be opposite because the chapter headings Ha are like all the decoration is on the top and it's like darker. So then these would be darker on the bottom. So we'll see what I decide to do. I don't know, um, for that. So anyway, <laughs> uh, my low this week is def just been like pregnancy related focus issues. I think I'm just, um, focus or motivation. I don't know. My get up and go is still sleeping apparently. Uh, so I do think that taking care of my bad phone habits will help. So, um, because that like eats such a huge chunk of time in the morning and I'm just sitting there like looking at random stuff when I should be writing. So, um, that's my plan. I'm going to stick to it. Dang it. <laughs> um, okay. So last week's obsession. I mean, I use obsession here in a very light way, uh, not in some of the other ways that I've been obsessed with things before, um, that I've talked about, but, um, mid journey released to version five. And so I have been playing around with mid journey version five quite a bit to figure out it's diff. It's very different from mid journey version four. It is, um, requires more specific prompting, um, and is less, I don't know. It's less, stylized or creative or chaotic maybe are the words I'm not sure on its own and so you have to be really specific in directing it however that being said the images are even more clear and detailed and um overall I guess better um like if you're trying to make photos they're more photorealistic um it's just I mean, for lack of a better word, smarter, better, 
I don't, I mean it, it's, but it is different working with it. So that is what I've been working on is trying to figure out the right prompting terms to use to get it to make what I want it to make. So, uh, kind of having to fall back on some of what I learned when I was back when I was using night cafe, which uses a stable diffusion, um, which last time I used it, which was many, many months ago, um, definitely required much more specific prompting than mid journey version three and version four. So that is what I've been working on. Um, this last week, uh, when I'm just messing around in the playroom with the kids on my phone, (laughs) uh, when they're busy doing other stuff. So, um, my big goals last week, how did I do with my goals? I, Finished writing All World Online Looking Glass Episode 7. I'm really happy with how that turned out. It's kind of gotten to the um, Big Bang portion of the story. Uh, I think this one is ending up to be like a long novella length, is my guess. I haven't added up every episode's chapter length, but I don't know, maybe somewhere around like 20,000 words or something. Uh, I wrote the Nick Chronicles Episode 9. That was a fun one. Um... I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. There's like a lot of dialogue and overlap with Kat's chapter 21 or 22. I can't remember. Um, and I think I'm just going to skip a lot more of the dialogue that happens to finish that chapter um, and jump forward to see something that is not just retelling um, what we already know, but as is actually giving us um, new information from Nick's point of view. So when I reached the point of the scene where it wasn't so much giving me new insight into Nick's point of view is when I was kind of getting bored with the scene. Um, and that's when I cut it off. And so I think I'm just going to jump forward to when Kat and Nick have captured Dom's Ba and are on their way back to Bainbridge Island because we never got to see that at all. Um, in, uh, Inkwitch. So that'll be interesting. And there's an interesting conversation I want Nick to have with Haru that I'm excited to write. So that's probably what will be in chapter or in episode 10 of the Nick Chronicles um, next month. Uh, And then I I wanted to start the rough draft of Rise of the Revenants. I've kind of talked about my issues with that so far. So I did not start it, obviously. Um, But uh, I have to start it this week. So what are my goals this week? I need to finish. I'd like well, I do. I need to finish writing The Last Vampire Queen, episode 12, hoping to finish that tomorrow. I have to start the rough draft of Rise of the Revenants, Revenants, which means I have to figure out the opening scene of Rise of the Revenants. And I think the thing that's hard with figuring out the opening scene is I also like to figure out the closing scene when I figure out the opening scene. So they're kind of like a nice reflection of each other. But I don't... I kind of do, I actually do have a good idea for the closing scene. So maybe I can figure out the opening scene based on that because it's the end of the series. It's a big closing scene, Um, a big deal at least. Uh, But I also had a song that I think is going to be the first song in the playlist for Rise of the Revenants. And maybe that's what I need to sit down and do is just create the playlist for Rise of the Revenants. And that'll help me get those first few scenes done. But um Meg Myers has a version of Running Up That Hill that I really liked. Um, And I was thinking, like, that could go really well for Cora in this final leg of the journey. Um, So that might help me also get going. Maybe I'll try to make, uh, get going on that um, tomorrow also and see if that can get help me feel a little more inspired for this story. Um, I also want to finish designing the rest of the Echo Trilogy special edition interior elements, the chapter breaks, the part headings, um, at least figuring out what I'm going to do for the part headings, or at least the like word part, whether or not I do the illustrations on those as well will remain to be figured out. Um, And then other headings like maps and I guess maps don't really need headings, but like, I don't know, other, there's like some appendices, appendices, appendixes, appendices, I'm not sure. Anyway, there's other, other things. There's like a timeline. There's, um, pretty sure there's a timeline. There's, uh, a family tree, that kind of thing. 
Um, okay, so, and then I'd like to send a newsletter if I can figure out the time to do that um, because I have not updated. I haven't done like a genuine newsletter update for quite some time and I need to do that um, to let people know how we're looking on darkness between the stars and the beginning of rise of the revenants and also just some fun updates on the special editions so yeah uh what am i looking forward to this week uh designing definitely designing i don't know why i'm in this like graphic design mode but i'm really excited about designing the rest of the interior of the echo trilogy special editions i can feel my voice failing me right now so it was definitely the right call to not record dissonance today all right, so that is it for me this week. I will be back next week with more updates. This ended up being really long. <laughs> I think I just kept rambling. <laughs> so um, until next until next week, uh, happy reading.